much effort um, as as uh, as much as I appreciate um, how much energy it takes. But I also know that when this train has to come to a stop, that there's tremendous energy that accumulates through that process. And that we are so one dimensional in our thinking that we're just thinking about the energy that it requires. But what about all that energy that's produced in that process? And, and some of you may know this, whether you um, have come in contact with electric cars, own one or have seen one, um, they have what's called regenerative brakes. This was really the inception point of that thinking, which was, wait, the process of braking actually can harness energy that can be used. And as of now, if you if you know about electric cars, when you take your foot off the accelerator, the 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 friction between the, the brakes and the wheel coming to a halt actually harnesses energy that can be used. Why that's important is because that's where we saw and that's where we see the true opportunity with with fatherhood is to really, can we squeeze more out of this? Is there, is there something left on the table that we have never looked at and said, well, this, and, and as Juan mentioned, we have seen the role of the dad be something that is an afterthought, uh, something that is um, uh, not, not uh, uh, seen as a priority or something that is not, not something that can be a, a producer or a harnesser of that energy. And that's where the inception of this whole process and whole journey and whole uh, idea came to be. Um, I'm assuming everyone can see my slides. Is that correct, Juan? You can see it? Yeah, great, fantastic. So with that, um, good morning. Um, I'm assuming everyone's in Southern California. I've had some people correct me and say, well, I'm actually one day ahead of you because I'm in China. So I'm assuming everyone's in Southern California and enjoying this. Um, uh, my name is Bobby Barzi. I'm first and foremost, a, a human that's looking to grow and 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 uh, really learn and really expand uh, my way of thinking and and to never stop that process. Um, second, I'm an incredibly proud dad of of uh, of two skunks uh, that uh, I used to have long flowing hair before them, but now they've they've taken all, all that with them. And third and uh, uh, most relevant to this conversation is uh, I founded this company that Juan mentioned, Fodata. Uh, as as really uh, a, a a tribute to what we just mentioned, um, and really to to for these two guys, uh, Lucifer and Mephistopheles, um, otherwise known as Pierce and Royce, um, by them entering my life and by them bringing that opportunity to the to the forefront of my my um, vision, uh, this whole thing began. And and a, a very interesting concept to think about is we are. We are pounded by the by the idea that parenthood is only a responsibility. You know, it's a responsibility to take care of, to to provide, to protect, especially as a dad. Um, and we miss, I think, a bigger part of that, which is the opportunity and and seeing it as a positive that that can mean so much. And I know we 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 think it, we we know that it exists, but as far as promoting that idea of wait, this is not a one-dimensional, one-sided coin that there's, yes, there's responsibility, but there's also tremendous opportunity. And, and when these two guys entered my life, I knew based on my experience with them and I knew based on my then exposure to what fatherhood meant and fatherhood was, was looked like uh, 12, 13 years ago, that there was an opportunity not only for me, but also for so many. Um, and I really began this as, as a, a personal journey because I thought that I needed to do this because I wanted to, um, again, take advantage of what I saw as uh, something that was left on the table, something that really wasn't tapped into as much as it should have, uh, similar to what that engineer saw in the locomotive. And really three things pushed me is I, at this point, which I was in a, in a fairly good role and I was and I was just kind of no pun intended chugging down the line and and doing good work um, I wanted to leave a, a legacy for my boys that it's okay to follow your passion uh, it's okay to do something that means a lot to you uh, and and to do it to put food on the table but why not do it for something that's positive 
that's something that we can have a discussion with and how I can involve them in this process and have them be the core of what I'm doing because I love my interaction with them. And I really loved the challenges that, um, uh, challenges that uh, this new role was bringing to me. And I wanted to do, do more work around it, which is really where this began is let's do this. Uh, and uh, we were doing this triangle, which to me is, is now at the center of a lot of things that we do, which is we were spending time together. We were learning and having fun. And I thought if we can take this model and we can maybe show other people that if we do this thing, then we will associate those three things together and to our relationship. Meaning that if I wanna learn, I can have fun and, and spend time with my dad. If I want to have fun, I can do it and during some time that we spend together and learn and so on and so forth. So all these things kind of came to be that I need to do something and the way we decided to do it, as Juan mentioned was, Every single person, I'm assuming, every single person in this in this call or in this uh, room uh, is wearing clothes, right? Uh, and what's interesting is that clothing, we don't realize this, is the closest thing to us. It touches us all day, closer than our loved ones. So the, the concept was that if I can make something for you that you really enjoyed, you already had a bucket for it because you were spending money on it, and I can infuse it with a message that allowed you and gave you the platform to talk about something that you were passionate about, then it could be something that we can really build on. And that's really where we came to this, well, let's do a clothing line. I did wasn't interested in doing a clothing line. The clothing line was a mechanism for us to be able to, to, to uh, do a message delivery and to engage people. And as you can see, our designs are unique uh, they're retail centric, meaning that if you went to a store, you might be like, oh, that's kind of a cool design. I like it. But every single one of them has a meaning that's associated to the relevance and importance of a role of a dad. For instance, the top left image, as you might see, the, the, the charcoal shirt with a green design on it, that's an oak tree. And an oak tree is one of the oldest symbols of fatherhood, about 5,000 years old. And it symbolizes deep roots. It provides shade and protection. And it's very strong. So those are the kind of things that we try and, and really have at the forefront of discussion, but in a manner that allows the recipient, the wearer, the person who's engaging it to, to tell their story the way they want to, not to be pushed into conversation, but for, for someone to say, if, if I see Juan wearing that and saying, hey Juan, uh, you wear that shirt a lot, that's pretty cool, what is it? And then I choose to tell the thing that's important to me about this design about this shirt, about my role as a dad, about the thing that resonates with me. And we are amazingly surprised by people that reach out to us and say, hey, I, um, I love being a dad. I'm going to be a dad. I love my dad. I had a terrible relationship with my dad. I, uh, I'm in awe of those that are taking this responsibility in the right way. So everyone is connected in a different way. And that's really what we want to do. And I think that's a very, very key thing to understand when, when we're thinking about fatherhood today is that it is not cookie cutter. It is something that's unique to everyone. Our experience as a parent and as a father is unique to us, what we've gone through and our children. So to allow for that discussion and dialogue to happen in a comfortable, easy way was very important to us. So we launched with this concept, it's like, okay, let's, let's create things that people love wearing uh, and it allows them to have this conversation and this platform and this dialogue. And it was kind of crazy. We took off almost 10 years ago. Um, and right off the bat, we had celebrities that were that were supporting us and wearing us and were in People Magazine. I had no idea who they were, but it was kind of fun to see them. And some people say, oh, this is so-and-so, never seen it. Uh, and But it was great to do that. But the important thing that what we were trying to do was, which is when we sold these items and when we had people um, uh, patronize our business, we then took the monies and we put on free programs for dads and kids. And it was about that triangle that we talked about, which is spend time together, have fun and learn. And these happen all over the States and some internationally, as you heard, um, and it could be anything, anything from let's learn robotics at a university, let's, let's uh, style hair, let's make cookies, let's do yoga, let's learn financial literacy, whatever community was interested in doing, uh, we would mobilize around them and we would support it in whichever way we could. And that was really the basic, simple 
uh, way that we thought we can reach out to people. We don't. We don't have to really push anything. We want it to be something that is uh, that 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 community is receptive to it, um, which which uh, was wonderful to start, and they just kind of grew from there, and to the point that um, our our programming now has some marquee programs, and then has some that happen in small communities. One of our biggest ones, uh, some of you may have had experience with incarcerated dads, is we work with a few institutions with their um, incarcerated dad population on working with them on having these same programs that we do in communities around the US and the world, but having them do it virtually, um, having them do it remotely um, in a way to be able to provide a, uh, an opportunity for mentorship for the dads, an opportunity for connectivity with the child, and something that's extra than just picking up the phone and saying, how was your day? Good, you know, close end the dialogue, but really giving them something that they both have to work on. And uh, in this specific scenario, thank you for prison for some of you may know, is um, on the border of Oregon and Idaho. Uh, and when these men go through their process of engaging their kids, they go to counseling, they, they go to dad's meetings every year. Unfortunately, we haven't been, been able to do this because of COVID, but every year we put on a camp on site where we bring their kids and they spend two or three days doing science, yoga, cooking, just hanging out as much as they can, which has been fantastic. So that's one of our programs. The other one that we put on, which has been fantastic, is that we put on a, um, a women's empowerment program. And people say, well, you're an organization that's in support of dads. Why are you doing a program for women's empowerment? And the short of it is that we all have amazing women in our lives. Uh, some partner, some wife, some mother, some, some, some daughter, some, you get the point. But these women have been incredibly instrumental and important in our lives and they deserve our support of their empowerment and our support of who they are. And more especially uh, uh, specific to our role as a dad, our kids needs to see, need to see that we are standing for the empowerment of those that need it and those that deserve it. So um, this is a huge program for us internationally that we put on. We'll, we'll talk about this one um, because it's very near and dear to my heart, uh, it is our Mental Fitness Five for Fathers. And this, this program, which launched about three years ago, focuses on how do we change the dialogue around mental health into one that is positive rather than one that's burdened with so much, um, especially for men and especially for dads. Uh, so we'll actually have our... Um, have the workshop be built around this. So we'll go into a lot more detail about it. Um, and then uh, our Red Beanie Bond, um, this is a program we work with the American Heart Association and it's to really raise awareness and combat heart disease and stroke, uh, which is a number one killer in the world. Uh, we work with the partner hospitals in replacing the beanies that you normally get, the, the pink and the blue and the white with a very bright red beanie. And, and it's the first matching item that the, the the baby and the dad get they both get a red beanie at, at at the at birth and it's really to raise that conversation around what are the several seven simple steps that you can do in order to uh be around for a long time for your for your little ones um and we've been incredibly blessed incredibly blessed a lot of hard work but this just shows a uh an outdated uh, image of all the places around the globe that we've been able to put on free programs, again, all free, paid for by the sale of the clothing line, and some remarkable locations and some really, really difficult difficult uh, programs that we pulled off. But that continues to grow, and it's really at the, uh, uh, at the heart of a lot of things that we do is to comp continue to push this concept of responsibility and opportunity and, and what we can do to really harness more of that energy that exists in the, uh, uh, the role of a dad. Um, so what does it all mean, right? We, we, we kind of took you through all the work that we were doing and we've done and we continue to really push the envelope on. And, uh, you know, uh, one because of the work that we do, we come in contact with, you know, thousands of dads, thousands of families, thousands of communities on, on what their needs are and what's happening. And based on today, based on the things that we've seen are relevant and pertinent today, I wanted to put on, put up a few slides, a few thoughts that I think might be good for you to consider and good for us to, to, to have as part of the discussion today. Um, and we'll start with uh, the concept of selfish versus selfless. Uh, and the word selfish, uh, historically, 
is a, a seen as an ugly word is seen as, as, as a dirty word, something that we're like, you know, if you're selfish, it's a bad thing. Uh, if you're selfless, you know, that's, that's what you need to be. Um, and I think we're missing the point a little bit here. And I think we're, we're uh, not considering the, the positive value of, of selfishness. And, and uh, I think most of you have probably seen this image when you board an air, airline and, and they have this in the in the seat back as well as the um, the flight attendants share this information with you is that in case of cabin pressure change and and the the oxygen mass will drop and they they're very quick to tell you that please put your yours on first and this makes perfect sense to you because you have to put this on in order to be able to operate, in order to be able to, to, to uh, understand what's happening, to then be able to help others, whether it's your children or others around you. And this is, a, a, I think, a, a central to us as men, as dads, to be able to do the things that we do. Again, this, this, this historical burden of be selfless, give all you can, and, and just continue to beat this drum, I think takes away from who we need to be and how we need to prepare ourselves and care for ourselves to then be able to do the job that is required of us. And this is a very uh, rudimentary drawing of what we try and promote, which is the two axes of gratification and gratitude. Gratification meaning, hey, I get so much, uh, so much from um, uh, doing something for someone. And, and helping someone with need. And gratitude is when someone takes care of you. Uh, so is there, a, is there a place between the two, um, which we call optimal utility is, there is a balance that needs to be had. You do need to be selfish. You do need to make sure that you do things that give you that, that sentiment and, and feeling of taking care of yourself, but you also need to be available and you give. But one doesn't trump the other one. It, there needs to be a balance. And there's a point for all of us where we feel like, hey, this is a perfect place. I feel like I'm at my best when I have this much of selfishness in me and this much of selflessness. So that's a very interesting concept to push and to really communicate not only to yourself, but also those that you come in contact with is we need to recognize that the, 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 that, that utility is optimal and different for each person, but it does require some of each part. Uh, so that's the concept of selfish versus selfless. Um, next one, direction and path. Um, I'm sometimes asked to, to talk to MBA programs about our business model and, and to young entrepreneurs and, and to, to, uh, uh, to those that are looking to start their business or have started a business. And this is one of my favorite um, images that I put up. And it's really about, you know, what, what we've been uh, uh, pushed on as far as our view of direction and path and what we need to do and how you need to follow this, 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 uh, this preset idea of what is the correct path and direction. So I put this image of, of the um, world map and my first question to these very bright, intelligent individuals is what is wrong with this map, right? And as you can imagine, some will raise their hand and immediately say, well, it's upside down. Um, and as you probably know, there's actually nothing wrong with this map as we have only seen or we're usually given an image of what the world looks like in the other direction. But the truth of it is there is no direction. There's no up, there's no down, there's no left, there's no right. So to look at something this way and say, ah, that looks wrong, it's kind of the same thing is that we are, we have to be cognizant and aware that a lot of things that we do is just because we've been raised that way. We've been taught that way. We think that's the okay way. We have to question these things and say, are we just doing it for that reason because it's been pounded into us or is it the way that we, it needs to be? Another example of that, which is one of my favorite ones to, 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 uh, to business communities and CEOs is that um, for some of you may have seen this movie called Free Solo, which is um, a documentary regarding a, um, a free climber that goes around the world and climbs uh, faces of mountains and cliffs and whatnot that are ridiculously difficult, but he does it with no harness, uh, no rope, uh, nothing at all. He, he just climbs them, uh, takes a tremendous amount of time to prepare, um, but he does. And this one was regarding 
uh, Yosemite, uh, and El Capitan, which some of you might be uh, familiar with, but they, they basically go through and talk about how he got to where he is um, and how he went about it. Um, and once he finishes and once he goes through the preparation and once he completes the process of, of uh, ascending the face of El Capitan, and this is one of those images as he's climbing up, which it gives me anxiety just looking at this. As you can see, he has no harness whatsoever. Um, once he goes through this process, they then reveal the path that he took to get to the top. Uh, I usually flip this just because it makes more sense for business folks. And I show them without the background, without the, the, the words in this, in this image. And I, if you can imagine for yourself, if this image, if this path was flipped uh, to the right side, uh, it kind of looks like a chart of a, of, a, um, of a company's performance. And I say, if you were to say this was a company, what would you say as a, as a business leader or someone who's, who has a good amount of business acumen? What would you say? And people would raise their hand and say, well, it looks like the company started off really well. There was a you know, period of stagnation and then some growth. And then something happened. Something happened where there was a big dip and, and maybe they needed to pivot to something else, but then they corrected the ship and, and you know, they, they, they uh, uh, fixed the problems and then there was uh, success and growth. Um, the funny thing is, and the interesting thing is, uh, the climber specifically chose this path because this was his path for success. He did not look at any parts of it as, oh no, I'm failing. Oh no, I'm going the wrong direction. Oh no, I am regressing and now have to work harder. He chose a path that best fit him. Regression, going sideways, going down, going up, all those things were components for his success. And without them, he would have failed. If he would have chosen a path that went straight from the bottom, straight to the top, he would have fallen to his death. But he chose a very calculated path, not based on what others would say is good or bad, or, oh no, I'm going backwards. He chose a path that was right for him. And I think that's one of those big things that we have to combat is to really consider that there's not one way. And again, the same thing is that unique opportunity that we have as a father is based on the path that's right for us, not done by just one path that everyone says has to be. So an interesting thing to consider as we work with the men in our communities and, and our roles with how we assist fathers. The next one is influence. Um, uh, we, I don't have to tell you that we live in a world that is so incredibly uh, bombarded with this concept of influence and what um, what that has meant, uh, means, and will mean as far as it affecting us and 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 in so many ways influencing us. Um, I will put up an image, which is interesting, and this is a chemical makeup of the chemist in, in, in the audience probably will pick this up, but this is the chemical makeup of ibuprofen. Uh, the reason I put this up is because I believe when someone has some knee pain or back pain, whatever it might be, our uh, approach as a society and people is that take some medication, take, take some pain relief, you know, remove that pain, uh, which is very uh, symptomatic of an approach right? There's something wrong. Let's fix it. But what we fail to see, and most of the times really fail to put a lot of effort and focus on is where did that knee pain or back pain begin? What is causing it? What is something that we can do to ensure as we are dealing with the pain that we are, have it in our, uh, you know, view, and we're doing, doing something about it, which is more of a preventative approach. And I think as a society, we have lost this and we become PR centric to the point that it says, if there is a problem, we need to fix that problem. Not to say what is the impetus, what is the cause, what is something that is getting us to this point and having a parallel path in, in approaching this idea and concept. Um, I often talk about this, this um, concept that, you know, if you were to sit down with someone and they called you stupid because of your opinion, they said, you're stupid. And our uh, uh, general position as a society is that, well, you need to combat that by 
making sure they understand that they're the ones that are wrong rather than it, or as as we see so much as this this cancel cu culture that's very big right now is like you don't agree with what i'm saying or you do something that i don't believe in i'm going to cut you out uh instead of instead of and as we see the chasm is growing so much between any side right instead of understanding or giving the thought or giving the space, giving the opportunity, giving the 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 uh, platform for someone to explain themselves in a respected way. So important for fathers to be able to not only understand that concept, but to be able to pass it on and to to, to really push this to their children to say, you know what, when you don't agree with someone, your point should not be that that's it, you're done. Uh, it should be like, why do you feel this way? And the funny thing is, and I've had some very, very difficult conversations with some folks that I fundamentally disagree with, right? They say something and my blood boils and I, and I can feel myself kind of reverting back to that mentality of, well, if you think this way, then you must be this or this. Instead of, tell me why you feel that way, right? To have this example of, if you can learn why someone feels that way, not only are you able to better understand them, you're able to better communicate with them and also understand what's happening in the landscape of environment right now. And what I've also found is that at some point, at some point, and I know something, sometimes this is hard to understand is we reach a commonality and we say, okay, wait a minute, on that, we're both on the same level and we're actually saying the same thing, but then there is a divergent path that happens based on things that happen. And it's, I think, incredibly important for us to be aware of, uh, especially today as dads and especially working with the dads today is saying this concept is so important, not only for our kids, but also for us to be in a better position to father. Uh, success, my goodness, success is, um, Talk about something that's loaded with with years and generations and historical uh, burdens that are associated to it. And, and for this one, I was going to share with you another anecdotal story, uh, one of my favorites, the story of two buckets. And some of you may know the story, but as the story goes, uh, there was a village um, and there were two buckets and the two buckets were used for bringing water from the stream uh, back to one of the households. Right. And this was the job of a young boy who had to go there every day and fill up the buckets with water and bring them back. Uh, as it turned out, one of the buckets started to rust a little bit on the bottom. And this rusting um, then created a small hole which started to drip some of the water out. So every day the boy would go to the stream, fill it up, bring it back. But obviously during that process, the water would start to leak slowly dripping out of one of the buckets. And so when the buckets would come back to the home, one would be less than the other one. And as, as I'm sure you can understand, that hurt the feelings of the bucket that was losing the water. And, um, you know, this started to wear on him and this started to really uh, make him upset. And as the years were on, the rust got worse, the hole got bigger, the drips got larger and the water level started going more and more down. Um, and to the point that uh, at one point, the, the, the bucket with the hole turned to the other bucket and said, listen, uh, I'm, not, I'm not liking this. This is not okay. I'm embarrassed. I'm not doing what I should be doing. And I don't want to do this anymore. The bucket without the hole said, you know what? I totally understand. Uh, but what I want you to do is give me one more day. Let's do this one more time. And if you don't like it, then let's stop. He said, well, I don't know what the use of this is, but sure. We'll do one more day. I've done all these years. So they go do the same thing. The boy wakes up in the morning, goes, grabs the buckets, goes down to the stream and picks up the water from the stream. And as he's coming back at this point, the rust has really affected the, um, the bucket and, and the water is coming out pretty, pretty uh, heavily. And this is obviously affecting the, um, the, uh, uh, the attitude of the bucket with the hole. And, you know, he turns to the other bucket and said, you know, I have no idea why I agree to this. Um, you just did this to make me upset and I don't appreciate it. And, and this is completely validated why I don't want to do this anymore. So I'm done. And the bucket said, okay, that's no problem, but do me a favor. You know, as we're walking back, look at the side of the road 
that I'm on. And he looked at that side and he said, well, and now look at your side of the road. And as he looked, his side of the road was filled with flowers, filled with beautiful uh, scenery because of the fact that he was leaking. And I think that's an interesting concept to think about is we're so one dimensional in how we see success and how we dictate what success is supposed to be based on what everybody else says that we sometimes, not sometimes, a lot of times miss the point of what is the definition of success and why do we define it the way do we do? And what is our, what is our opportunity? You know, what is that opportunity that's naturally created for us? And how do we celebrate that rather than something that somebody else came up with? So an interesting concept on that. Um, so really uh, that kind of transitions into um, our next point, which is we, um, Every year as an organization, we, we spend a good amount of time coming up with a new design, kind of like I touched on at the beginning of this, is what is the current state? What is the current relevant topic that we want to talk about? What is something that we really want to make sure that we, we bring to the forefront with Father's Day coming up and some concept that we think resonates really well? And it kind of goes through what we just talked about, the success uh, anecdote, which is, you know, we, we, we live in a society where things are predefined, especially for the role of a dad, that things need to be A to B. Uh, and you just need to follow the path that everybody else has done. It's like, why are you doing it? Because everybody else has done it this way. I'm supposed to do this way. People accept me because I do it this way. And if you deviate from that path, then you're an outcast. You know, you, what are you doing? He's doing something wrong or he's, he's, he's not following the way it should be done. Just, just put your head down and do it that way. And obviously, one of the things that comes to the forefront of, of, uh, of, of life and especially parenthood and even more specifically the role of a dad over the last 12 to 18 months is that it's completely uh, opened up uh, areas that are very difficult for us as well as opportunities, whether we realize those or not, that's obviously in, in our camp. But but what we wanted to do was really take this and say, what is it that we can really wrap around this idea of, you know, things have opened up and what is it that we can do around that? And which was this year's design, which we just released um, on the screen right now, is this co concept of a sphere. And it really uh, 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 incepted with with you know we 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 are we go through life with a path that's very linear linear and and set up for us. You you got to go to school. You got to study hard. You got to make sure you focus. You got to make sure you go to some sort of a uh, after uh, uh, high school uh, institution. You got to work hard there. You got to get a job. You got to find someone. You got to find a partner that you want to uh, be with. You got to start a family. Then you got to do this and you got to do that. It's all set. If you were to ask most people, they'd say that is preset for me from the beginning of it. And that comes with a tremendous amount of of uh, 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 responsibility, burden, pressure, all those things that you guys are very well of. And the reason why we went with the sphere is we like to look at it, especially the role of a dad in this, which is a sphere has no beginning and no end. There's no specific entry point or exit point. You know, there's no up, there's no down. You create an environment where within it, you feel comfortable and you can roam and be as you wish, right? And that's a very different way of looking at it and saying this rigid A to B, B to C, B, C to D, and, and going down this path and doing this thing that everyone expects you to do because I need to be accepted rather than wait, I'm unique. I'm a unique individual. I was always a unique individual. And in this role, it's okay for me to be unique. And it's okay for me to say, this is more than a uh, 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 responsibility. It's an opportunity. And if we can take this and if we can say, I feel much better uh, uh, opting in this manner and what I can teach based on this to my kids, it gives them a whole new way of, of interacting and a whole new way of respecting each other's position, a whole new way of really growing together rather than just everything has got to be the same way. So it's a very interesting concept for us. Um, and I'll leave you with this. Um, you know, recognizing and appreciating the opportunity is, is something that's monumental to us, right? The fact that we see and we appreciate and we recognize 
uh, is so much more than just saying we go through so much blindly. We do so many things without even necessarily thinking about it because we, it's preset for us. It is, is a part of your evolution as an individual. And that's another thing that we try and really, really uh, bring home is that you are an individual. You have an incredible opportunity as a father and, and an amazing uh, 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 chance to uh, really take advantage of this pure energy that's available to you. But you have to evolve as an individual so you can then be a better parent and a father. So with that, um, I hopefully uh, hit some points that are important for you and important for your constituents and your communities. Um, and I will turn it back to Juan. Awesome, thank you so much. Appreciate you, Mr. Bobby. Is there any, um, is there any questions that we wanna ask right now? Any, anything that uh, you know, we wanna um, touch on, any takeaways? Now is the time to ask, Mr. Bobby. Feel free to unmute yourself. You don't have to put it in the chat. Just say it. Thanks for the very I don't have a question, but I just want to say thank you. That was fantastic. It was great. I love the analogies. I applied it to my to my own life, to my own self. So um, yeah, wow, it was great. Thank you. I appreciate that. I believe I heard Mr. Jeffrey Tunnel. Yeah, mine seems to come in a little late. Sorry, I just want to say, Bobby, thanks for that. Very fresh look, uh, really eye opening in every way. Appreciate it very much. I appreciate those words. Thank you. Awesome. So well, let's uh, we'll go ahead with that. We'll go ahead and go into a quick little break. So feel free to get up, stretch, get some coffee, uh, and we'll bring it right back here. Do not go away. Happy birthday, Juan. Uh, thank you, Miss Stacy. I appreciate you. <laughs> Feeling young, feeling young. <laughs> good, good. Yeah, great presentation. Deals with, I mean, just with the population we deal with, you know, they're all on different paths. That was good. That was good. It was uh, a nice yeah. reminder.
awesome so i'm hoping hoping everybody's back i just want to say that uh we are here at children's network and the ellen empire father involvement coalition have been actively uh, at work in regards to father engagement and bringing awareness to the whole um the importance of father involvement uh in our father campaign fatherhood campaign fathers are irreplaceable not only are we in social media relaying these messages to try to bring positive fatherhood imaging throughout the county of san Bernardino and in, in the inland empire as a whole but also uh, i've been able to you know reach out to even other states that caught wind of our work that we're doing we also have i don't know if you all noticed but we also have our um, bus lines uh, omnibuses that are that have our ads on the tail on um, the tailgates of their buses with fathers are irreplaceable and with spectrum we'll also be running that little commercial that you just um, saw um, and the whole point of this is just to kind of just to highlight the importance of father involvement and also to bring awareness to um, june as fatherhood awareness month proclaimed by san Bernardino county board of supervisors as we mentioned before and we're going to keep mentioning over and we just hope that you all um, can join in on the efforts. Um, we don't just sit at this table. We don't just come together to try to just, um, you know, pass time. We really take this work seriously. And we hope that you all that are in attendance can, can kind of help and take action. Uh, we need to be able to take action as a team collectively, because we, we used to say that we want to bring and, and um, create more father friendly environments, more father friendly agencies, more father friendly lobbies. But as a coalition, we've passed that. I believe that if we work collectively, we can create a father-friendly county, county of San Bernardino, where we really look at fatherhood um, and engaging fathers with intention. Because we know that when we when we strengthen our fathers, we strengthen our communities. Um, there's uh, less poverty rate, less crime rate, with communities that have uh, fathers engaged. And so we're not saying that fatherhood is the answer to all problems, but we are saying that fatherhood is a key. Um, complicating factor father absenteeism is a key complicating factor in our communities and not to take not to take away from our our mothers as well because i was raised as from a single mother and uh, she's been just she was amazing you know in her last five years um that we were able to engage uh, she was just we just had the best mother-son relationship um and she passed on um, due to cancer in 2014 and although we had our differences growing up um grew up without a father myself and so Again, just to say, you know, we, we, we definitely recognize that mothers are as equally as important and mothers have been doing a lot of the great work. And so we're not saying in any way that fathers are, you know, are to be held over that that role. We're all we're saying is that, you know, we, we really need to be able to um, seek us. How can we engage fathers differently? Can we look at what internally within our agencies and see that we can increase the efforts um, to engage our fathers? And so I kind of just want to share a little bit, or actually I want to, I want to switch gears really quick um, before we go back to Mr. Bobby and just kind of uh, catch up with some of our coalition members that are in attendance and, and just to kind of get some feedback of some of the, uh, of the, of the dads that they service. So, uh, and, and, and this is off script, everybody, this is off script, but this is, I'm telling you, this, this is very impactful and powerful. So I'm going to pick on a few of our, our coalition members, Mr. Jeffrey Tunnel, which is our, our he's our um, co uh, chair of the Ellen Empire Father Involvement Coalition. Do you mind getting yourself off mute and just kind of share some of this? Uh, and then Mr. Andrew Caffey as well can can assist with this. But can you guys just unmute yourselves and share what you do at the Mom and Dad Project in Big Bear and some of the key takeaways that you've seen from your fathers? Certainly. <clears throat> in fact, we just had a graduation last night uh, from the Nurturing Fathers Program. It was a, a combined class with um, dads in the classroom, dads online. It was very exciting to see guys making progress. Um, I, I tell people that in our classes, we it'll be a little hard to gesture here, but when, when we get guys involved, generally on the first night of any gathering, they're, you know, they're folded arms, they're leaning back, they're leaning away, and they're kind of asking in their own mind, what am I doing here? Uh, second week of getting together, their arms are on the table, elbows on the table, they're leaning forward a little bit. And then by the third week, 
you can't keep them quiet. I mean, they are just engaged and they're starting to ask questions. They're building relationships with each other. Halfway through a, a 14 week program, they're looking around the room saying, hey, how come this place isn't full of dads? This is the best thing that's ever happened to me. Last night at graduation, one of my dads said, I sure could have used this 10 years ago when I started my family, where was it? Um, and so we're having great responses at the dad level with the, with the dad project here at Big Bear. And uh, Andrew Caffey, uh, I'll, let him, I'll mute and let him jump in here, uh, has had similar experiences now with the Spanish speaking community. Uh, and so take it away, Andrew. Yes, hello everyone. My name is Andrew Caffey, Father Engagement Coordinator. So I could second with everything that Jeff said. Uh, I do have my uh, upcoming class coming up in July. This will be my fourth class for the Hispanics uh, up here in Big Bear. So it's the first Spanish speaking uh, classes we've had in this mountain area. So it's been very successful, but it's also, I think it takes a lot more work due to the Hispanic community to get some dads to go out and do something that, you know, it's for their own uh, benefit and to come with a group of guys. They kind of see it as like a oh, class. I'm, I don't need to go have a class. I'm, I'm a good father. Like you told me, I'm a bad father. So it was kind of challenging. But uh, once they're here, they don't want to leave. And it's pretty amazing. It's, you know, once we go through the whole program, they want to keep coming back and keep coming back. But now they're doing word to mouth and spreading the, the, the information and everything that we do here at the Mom and Dad Project. And so they're loving it. So I'm getting dads that are already gathering up for July coming up. And so it's been really amazing to see. But the key points for me and, and, and what I take away is the vulnerability when they open and share here, just like Jeff said, you won't get them to stop talking after the third weekend, they're locked in. And so we got tears coming down, we got emotions. And then we're learning that, you know, you could cry as a man. It doesn't make you less of a man. And it's okay to be a loving, nurturing father. And, and that's what we want. And so for the Hispanic community, that's a huge thing because we deal with a lot of machismo. Um, I snip that, that leaves, that you don't come in with that in this door. And so it's it's been great with the Hispanic community. I'll add one thing also, Juan, I just wanted to say that somebody came into the office yesterday and said, hey, I just saw the IEFIC ad on Hulu. So we're out there. Awesome, awesome. That is good to hear. That is good to hear. All right. Uh, how about Mr. Mr. John Fife? If you can please unmute yourself and just tell us a little bit about the boot camp for new dads and how um, some of the takeaways and some of the engagement that goes on with the dads there, some of the feedback that you get and, and just experiences. <laughs> Yeah, hi Juan, hi everyone. Uh, yeah, we're actually uh, going to be doing a class actually tonight uh, at the Mona Valley Hospital, um, and it's an, actually it's a great experience with the dads because these dads come in there, they they're clueless. A lot of them are scared. They're really unsure, don't know what to do. You know, their life's going to change, and we get them right from the ground up, right there, helping to learn about what it means to be a new new and expectant father really trying to get them to understand about what it means to, to work with the mom, really talk about communication, teamwork, and safety. Love it, love it. And so again, this is out of Pomona Valley Hospital. And when we do our research and we look at the hospitals here in San Bernardino County, um, there, there's very no, there's no other uh, boot camp for new dads program. And that's something that we really need to ask ourselves, are we okay with this? Here we have a chance to connect with our fathers early on, um, right when we when they become fathers. And so how can we get more of these boot camp for new dads throughout our hospitals? What is it that can we do? So my hopes is that we have some folks that are on this call that can help um, in, in the efforts because that's going to be one of our upcoming um, goals is to see more of these boot camp for new dads um, in, our, in our local hospitals, county hospitals throughout um, the Yellen Empire. I had a couple of folks reach out from different hospitals that are interested in. And so I just want to make sure that everyone's aware of the, of the resources that are out in the community for our dads. And if anybody is interested in, in, um, in starting or implementing a fatherhood program, some of the feedback that we would get from our dads is that there are no, again, like I said earlier, there are no resources specifically for dads, right? Um, and so we want to be able to see more implementation of these fatherhood programs. The 24-7 Dads is a great curriculum with the National Fatherhood Initiative. Uh, Nurturing Fathers program here, we have some master trainers within the coalition that can help with that as well. And, and any, other, any other program. But I think I, I want to touch really quick on one more. I know Mark Smith has an awesome program at Walden Family Services called the Nurturing Parenting Program. 
and he's shared before on some of the um, experiences that he had with his dads. Mark, if you don't mind, and I, I don't mean I don't mean to put people on blast, but that's just that's just me. You guys should already know. But Mark Smith, can you please unmute yourself and just kind of share some of the experiences you have with your dads there, and how even though you're not specifically tailoring, um, you know, or, or uh, dads, but you still see dads coming in, and how has that experience really opened up um, your eyes in a sense? Uh, thank you, Juan. Um... I gotta, I gotta say, uh, when I first started into the Nurture and Parenting program, getting fathers involved in the program was a challenge. And then not even getting them in, them staying was a, was a challenge as well. But this, I don't know what has changed, but we've got more fathers entering our program. And I have a father now, he, he graduated the program, but he still wants to keep coming every week because he enjoyed the information that much. He says, I'm learning, I'm growing, I'm learning to be good, better dad. Uh, I have several sessions that I do throughout the week and each one of them has got fathers in it, which was unheard of. But now it's, it's kind of like there's more of them coming in. And what I love about the fathers being involved is many of them have been encouraging to the other parents that's in the class. And not only that, encourage them to take responsibility for the decisions that got them in the position that they are to begin with, without me having to say anything. So it's been a wonderful experience having them in there and saying, hey, you know, I understand that, and this is the other parent, other fathers saying this to other fathers and other parents in the class. I understand you're upset. I understand you're not happy that you feel like you don't have to be in these parenting classes, but you made a decision that landed you here. So now that you're here, take advantage of the information that you're getting. And I sat back and said, wow, I'm glad that came from them and not me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's been a great experience and I, and I wish I could get more fathers involved um, in the parenting classes that are, we are holding, but we're getting more in, they're becoming, once some of them, they come in, they, they have that, like Mr. Tunnel said, they like, I don't need to be here. I, I'm a good dad, I'm a good father. And I just, we always tell them, we're not here to judge your parenting skills. That's not my job. My job is to give you information. What you do with that information is up to you. And once they start hearing it, they say, you know, I didn't see it that way before. I didn't hear it that way before. And now they're saying, I know I'm graduating, but I wanna keep coming back. That's how effective it's been. And that's how, uh, and they, some of them have referred other fathers and other parents to, the, to them because they think the information was that valuable. So it's been a really great experience. Sorry, I was trying to unmute yourself myself. Awesome. Thank you so much for that feedback. That, that was great. That was great. And so we have a question here. Uh, how can we invite more fathers? Can you send? Uh, absolutely. We can send more information. Um, uh, we need to encourage. Absolutely. Thank you, Ms. Irma, for that comment. We will definitely send out more information on how we can um, get. And, that, and that's what it's all about, connecting our fathers to those programs that are already already in existence and making new partnerships to create more programs. So I'm going to go ahead and hand it back over to Mr. Bobby. Uh, Mr. Bobby, you still here? I sure am. Right here. All right. Well, that is... Um that is um, really uh, great information that you guys were sharing. It's natural, it's real, it's, um, um, and it's so interesting because some of those, a lot of the points that you're saying, it's across the, the globe actually, because we work with so many different communities. And it's so interesting that um, the same themes apply. You know, it's, 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 it's a generational thing that has been passed on. Some are more uh, pronounced than others, but the reality is that we are all going through the same thing um, and really comes down to some of the points that you guys mentioned, which is this concept of what dad's supposed to be, uh, how they're supposed to interact, um, how they are uh, supposed to feel, how they're supposed to father, um, not because of how they feel, and, and, and inherently it's, it's inside their core programming, but what is the expectation and what is the, um, what is something that, that's, uh, uh, how are people gonna judge me? And, and you guys mentioned those words judged and the machismo, it just comes from this, 
generational passed down and societal expectation of you're supposed to be this way. And it's it's incredible the work that you all are doing because it's so important. It's so important and it's, it's, it's at the center. And I know I'm preaching to the choir here. It's at the center of so many things that happen in our society. And, and the work that you're doing is, is, is tremendously important, not only for the dads, but as you know, it's for their kids and how those kids then that can then benefit from the interactions and the opportunities and the discussions and the uh, the inflections that need to happen, the pivots that need to happen in that role to then for them to say, oh, okay, maybe that's a different way or I like that that we're talking about. So it kind of leads to what we're talking about. And as I mentioned to you guys before, one of the programs that we've um, pushed on and it's been really wonderful for us to to see that it's such a need for this um hold on one second while i'm figure out my technical issues um is that um really this concept of um uh i don't know why this is not working right now but i can certainly take it for you guys i don't know what you are seeing let me see if i can stop that for a second and just talk about this. Um, but uh, it's really this concept of um, what what we believe at, at um, as an incredible opportunity for a father is that uh, it, it, the self care that we talked about, right? And I'm wearing this shirt today because three years ago, we saw that um, we really have to broach this conversation around our mental well being and our mental health, um, which uh, you know, it gets it gets shoved to the side because, as Andrew mentioned, you know, most people say, uh, "I don't have a problem." What are you talking about? I don't have a problem. There's no problem, and we see it as a problem. And most of the things that happen in society right now, the dialogue that's happening around mental health is negative. Uh, there are school shootings. There are domestic abuse. There's there's uh, things that are happening. There's depression and all these things that happen. And say, we're going to completely focus our attention, PR, news around negative mental health states, which is absolutely real and it exists, but kind of like the presentation we had before, which was, um, what about what about the preventative side of it? What about taking that and saying, is there an opportunity here for us to broach this conversation and make it something that's a little bit more approachable? And um, what I always say to people is, if you were to go to someone and say, I went to the gym today, right? I went and worked out today. 99% of the people, if not more, would say, good for you. Like, that's great. You know, you're keeping, you're keeping yourself healthy. You're doing something that, that's good for your body. And it, it's a good uh, release of tension. And, and it's just generally something that's accepted by society as, uh, uh, as, a, as a good thing, as a positive. Now, if you were to come to the same people and say, um, I spoke to my therapist today, right? The first thing that 99 out of 100 people probably would say back to you, as you're probably saying in your head, is what's wrong, right? The, the complete focus of society has come to the point where as if you say, if you say something that you're, you're tending to your mental health and mental well-being, it's because there is an issue. There is a problem. There's, there's an emergency of some sorts happening that you need to tend to that rather than us changing that conversation, changing that dialogue in saying, this is a very, very healthy thing to do. You know, this thing between our ears controls everything we do. Uh, and it's, it's, it's at the center of our decision making is a center of how we behave and a center of how we interact. So for us, to deem it as non-priority, as something that we want to suppress and push down and not be something that we tend to. The best athletes in the world, the ones that are at the, at the, at the, at the highest point of their careers, they work on their craft every day, whichever, whichever sport you're in. And we applaud that and we say, yeah, you should be doing that. But the thing that controls everything we do and think we put that at the bottom of the list and say, if you are openly working on this and you're seeking to, to make sure this muscle is being tended to, 
uh, then there's something wrong. Or we'll talk behind their back or we judge them and we say, oh, so-and-so's dad is seeing a therapist. And we go, oh my gosh, that's what's wrong. Like I'm going to keep my kids away from them rather than, hey, that person's actually taking uh, advantage of an opportunity and doing something that's going to be healthy for them and their kids. So with that, uh, we launched this program called, um, and I'm going to try one more time, see if I can share my screen with you um, and see if that works, because I just wanted to go over the, the points of this program with you. Let's see if that works. Well, let's, let me see. Uh, let's see. Is this going to this? Oh, no, it's going to the wrong presentation. So for some reason, it's not wanting me to play the other presentation. And maybe if I close this, sorry, guys, nothing like a live presentation. Let's try this one. Let's see. Oh, here we go. All right. So um, so what we wanted to do with this with this dialogue and with this conversation was really um, say, let these are the five points that we want to uh, promote, right? We want to remove, and I think that's a little too aggressive. We want to change the connotation that's associated with attending to your mental state and mental well-being. Uh, we also wanted to make it more approachable. Like we didn't think that we we're going to bring someone from from where they are currently to, hey, I'm a, you know, I'm going to stand on the rooftops and shout that this is important. But we just wanted to make it something where they said, man, that doesn't seem as scary, as daunting as judgmental as I expected it to be, right? Um, also, we wanted to be something that's very simple and, and, and uh, integrates into daily life. Like they were doing things, men are doing things, dads are, dads are doing things. How do we take that and put it into their daily routines or, or what is seen as a daily scope of a life, right? And the last part, which I think is really important, is we wanted to lead with, hey, you know, you are a conduit to your kids. And by doing this, you're able to connect and hopefully uh, assist your kids in their mental um, health uh, uh, progress and development. But as uh, sort of like a, a sneaky spinach, in the process, they would get service too, because they have to be the deliverer of this program to them. So a couple of things that we, we set up as the beginning of it, and we work with these folks at Advocate, which is a wonderful organization if you haven't worked with them, but they really connect people with mental health um, professionals. Um, and they work with them on these five simple things that we think work well. Um, and we call them the Mental Fitness Five for Fathers. Kind of a nice ring to it, a lot of alliteration, a lot of Fs. Um, but that was really it. So how do we take this from mental health, but make it fitness because as we let's let's play off or let's leverage at least the machismo for something that's beneficial in one sense, which was, hey, fitness is a good thing. Like I like fitness and it makes it a little bit approach, more approachable, a little less uh, of, of something that you would shy away from. And let's make them five simple things. So I thought for the workshop today that we're going to go through the five and I would love to have some participation on what are some thoughts on each one that, as you see, as hurdles. And what do you see some thoughts on each that you say, oh yeah, I, I can uh, I can see this being good or even sharing examples that work for you. So number one, and this is a very, very simple one. I think people say, I don't really see why this is such a big deal is talk with your kids, all right? About anything, anytime and anywhere. The kicker on this one, the kicker on this one is that we need to make sure that we can understand, we can digest, and we can level the conversation so then it can be uh, uh, understandable for our kids at whatever age they're at. There are topics and subject matter. And people say to me all the time, say, wait, did you talk about X, Y, and Z to your kids? And say, yes, but I have to take the time to take the information, process it myself, understand what it is, and then present it to them. And the reason why this is important is, as you guys all know, if you don't talk to your kids, somebody else is going to. Right. If you don't take the step of understanding something that's happening and presenting it to them and say, ah, they're too young. We all know because we knew things before our parents, our friends, our community, our people that were that were in our lives would dictate a lot of that thinking because our parents would say they're just kids. And if you don't take the time to do that, then somebody else is going to teach them. And in the process, you're also teaching yourself. 
you're learning about something, you're processing, and you're saying, I'm going to try and present this in a way that my kid, that my child is going to be receptive to it. And guess what happens during the process? You are talking to each other, not just about sports, not just about things, not just about surface level stuff, but you're kind of getting into some some deeper stuff and laying the foundation, what we hope is when the more difficult stuff comes to be, then you have a chance to talk to them. So on this point, does anyone have any thoughts or feedback around why this would or wouldn't, or even a scenario where you say, I like to see more of X, Y, and Z happening? I have something if I could share. Um, So I, used to do visitation with uh, parents, uh, you know, with the kids. And so that wouldn't even occur during visits. And so I would always just pay attention to those little details of that conversation even taking place with parents and children. And when I go out and even just a restaurant, these little things here just dominate us and there's no talking with the kids. So I think that is very, very important because you have to know what's going on with your kids' lives. Like you said, they're, they're going to talk to someone else. And that's something that I would always tell my families that I've worked with throughout my, my career is that, you know, you got to talk to your kids and have a relationship because at home, that's the foundation. If you don't have that at home, they're going to go somewhere else and look for that. And that's when they may talk to negative influences and bad people that have bad intentions. And next, you know, they're going down a vicious cycle of bad things. So talking with your kids anytime about anything anywhere is extremely important. And so I, I love this um, personally. And so it's, yeah, I had parents that couldn't even tell me the kids, their kids' favorite color, like simple things like that, because there was no talking. And so especially now with, you know, everything going virtual with the whole with COVID and online school and whatnot, you got to just engage and talk to your kids more. Thank you. For the front lobby, please. Call in here. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. You're absolutely right uh, that they are just naturally inquisitive and they want to know, right? And sometimes we feel overwhelmed because we're like, I don't even know what to talk to them about. I'm so burdened with so much going on in life that it's easy to take the excuse of, well, you know, they'll figure it out. No one talked to me, right? No one, no one took the time to tell me anything. And you know, I'm doing okay, or I'm, I'm not like horrible. And that's really some of the, the justifications that we hear. But we really need to press parents, we need to press dads to say, you have to take the active role of open ended dialogue, not just close ended dialogue. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. Uh, let them in, share with them who you are, and what you go through good and bad. Uh, one of the examples here is that what I would hear from a lot of folks is when they would engage with their kids, it would primarily be like the Spanish Inquisition. You know, it would be, what did you do? What did you learn? Who did you play with? What are you doing now? What are you working on? What's happening in school? It's just question after question after question, right? Just bombardment of you, 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 without any basis of why, um, they should share back with you. So one of the things that, that number two on this list that we really push for dads to do is begin the dialogue actually sharing about you. Again, taking the time to think about what is it that I can share and want to share and, and should share with my children and tell them about me, right? Tell them about who their dad is and what they're going through. Not just the good stuff. And that's really important. It's not just the good stuff. Hey, I'm going through this. You know, I have to work on this project. I have this coworker or I have this thing that's happening. That's, you know, giving me some difficulty and I'm working around it. And what's remarkable, what's remarkable is that the children will actually start asking you questions not only during the conversation, but they will actually start asking questions in future dates and say, hey, dad, how did that project go at work? Or, hey, dad, what happened with, you know, with your with your conversation with Uncle Joe or whatever it might be. But this is an incredible way for them to see that you trust them to share with them. It's an incredible way for you to actually share some things and think about sharing some things and for you to begin having a 
back and forth, open dialogue again, rather than you tell me, you tell me, you tell me, I'm gonna keep asking you questions until you give me an answer, right? So same with this one, I'm gonna open it up and say, does anybody have any thoughts on this? Have they seen examples of this or, or generally what's your feedback? And, and no, no, no issues, no issues. If we don't have something at this point, we can keep moving, but keep these I in thought. Because, yeah, sorry, me, go ahead. I'm sorry, Bobby, but for me, it, uh, it just uh, touched really quickly when you had mentioned in regards to um, giving tips to dads, as far as, you know, dialoguing with their kids. And, and I see that even with my own children as well, with, where they're constantly asking questions, like how did it go at work and, and so on and so on, or they hear me talking with my wife about something and the kiddos are just, you know, following up like, hey, I remember you were saying something about at work, you know, how's it going with your son or just in, just in general. And I think that dialogue right. is, is what we try to encourage um, fathers on a daily basis. Right. And, and so I appreciate you sharing that. That was that was awesome. Yeah, it's 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 amazing. You know, again, we I think we were raised in a generation um, and so were our parents and those before them is that we don't give enough respect to kids. We think that their ability to process, understand, to, to, to retain is very low. But what we found through science and research is actually they're tremendously more capable and they're as capable as we really want them to be. And this is another example. And I think that's where we're, we're laying the foundation for these more difficult conversations that will inevitably happen is to show that there is trust, that there's dialogue rather than dictatorship, that we really are just trying to be part of their lives and let them in and, and sharing with them. So this is a very, very good practice and exercise. And I think one of the key ones in the five that we talked about. And then in the chat as well, um, somebody, uh, Adrian Vasquez put that as he raised his boys, he had an understanding that if they needed a friend to talk to, preface the conversation with that. They also had the understanding within the scope of the conversation if they felt it was going to harm them, the dad and him would kick in and it worked out great. So that's great feedback. Thank you. And then Ms. Carmen Hernandez also mentioned that something that works for her kids and the dad is when they eat dinner. At the table, they will start conversations without even knowing it. Yeah, yeah and those are happening. Those are happening because they've probably done some great work. They've done some great work of setting that up so they everyone feels included, that their thoughts and, and, and questions are actually going to be respected, not saying, oh, you, you, know, you don't know anything about life. You haven't experienced anything. You know, that sort of perspective that unfortunately is, is something that's handed down to a lot of folks and generationally part of the conversation is, I'm not going to respect you because you're small and you're you're a child rather than I'm going to respect you to share with you what I'm going through because not only is it good for you it's good for me it's good for me to to let you know what's going on in my life the good and the bad so I appreciate you guys sharing that sharing that information back with me uh number three to take care of yourself first uh, and we talked about it in the other presentation as far as putting the oxygen mask on but uh you know, it, th this is again one of those uh, misnomers and 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 things that we think society puts on the role of a dad is that once you become a dad, you're 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 now this this new human, and you're now this new person, uh, and of course you have this new opportunity ahead of you and this wonderful journey that you're going to go through, but we kind of push aside that. Wait, uh, I was an individual prior to this, right? I had likes and dislikes and things that I did and, and things that I involved in, things that I was curious about and things that really, really um, uh, got my curiosity uh, to, to a different level. And I was involved in things. And then we feel like, okay, well, you know, there's so many jokes around when you're expecting is like, well, you know, kiss your life goodbye and, and all these things that we associated with, with the role of a dad instead of, instead of promoting you are a person, and I, and I talked about this, like you are first and foremost an individual that needs to be continuing your path of growth and, and, and self-care and, and understanding and expansion in order to then be able to take advantage of this opportunity, more of this opportunity than, than you would otherwise. 
So ensuring that you consider there is a balance here. You know, we talked about that, that the axes that, that of, of gratification and gratitude, this is, this is exactly that, is that your highest utility point falls somewhere when you feel like, you know, I'm doing things for myself, but I'm also very present and trying to be a better father, father figure in this, in this role that I'm in. So that's the third one, which I think is, is, a, is some, something that's, that's tremendously overlooked. So I'll open up to, to, to you folks and see what your feedback is on this one. I have something again, I'm really big on mental health as well. So the taking care of yourself with the dad project in the classes I've had, especially for the Hispanic culture, this is a huge thing as well, because they won't go to the doctor at all, right? And so when it comes to mental health, they may not have an understanding of what that is and may not recognize that they have an issue. But what we do at the dad project, Jeff and I, is, is we have them face their like internal child, because most adults, not all, may grow up like to me, adults are just um, grown kids that may have unresolved issues or traumas they've never faced. So we have them focus on their internal child and talk about the things they captured from their father, if they had one, the good or the bad, or if they had an absent father, it still impacted them in some way. So what is it that they took from that? And so it may have, it may be resentment. Most of the times we get the feedback, it's resentment, anger, hatred. So we start with kind of like a healing process and it comes to a point, I think it's week 10 or 11, where we kind of just let that go, you know, and start taking care of yourself now so you can be 100% yourself and be 100% for your family and children specifically. So this is great. Thank you for sharing that. Anyone else? Yeah, this is uh, John Feist. I was going to say, you know, working with new and expectant fathers, um, one of the things that I see, and I hear this from new fathers, that, you know, um, if they have these habits that they been doing over a period of time, whether it be partying, drinking, smoking, drugging, whatever, they get to, you know, when they actually have a baby, they see, you know, the responsibility is big and it's like it hits them in their face. So I always say, you know, be thinking about, you know, your family. It's all about sacrificing for your family, for your children, for your partner, mm -hmm. your wife, you know, working with them. If you want to be around, take care of your health. You get one chance at doing this. And those early years are so important. The first five years are the most important four years of a child's life, be there, be involved and be there for them because you want to be there to love them and to, you know, make those memories because that's the only thing we take out of this life is the memories. Thank you, John. I appreciate that. Sure. Anyone else before we move on to the next? Okay, great. Uh, number four, be part of their world encourage and engage in their likes and interests. Uh, this is an interesting one. Uh, again, uh, we are raised to believe that most things that a child does is child's play, that uh, it's just for them to do and for you not to be involved in. But it also comes down to the respect that you show your child. And in the process to learn the likes and dislikes, to find out what they're about, how they tick, how they operate, what they're thinking. And I think someone mentioned, I apologize, I don't recall who, but some parents don't know their child's favorite color or they don't know what they like. They just kind of push things on them. So for you to take the time, for you as a father to take the time and say, I'm not just going to tell you how to do something. I'm not just going to tell you what to think and who to be and what to play and what to like. I actually want to learn about you. I want to give you a chance to show me who you are and how you operate. And I'm not going to correct it, but I'm just going to be observant of it. It, again, is part of that respect foundation that is integral to, to growing together and to understanding who they are. An example I give people is, you know, I had to learn how to play Fortnite. Did I want to? No. No, I didn't. But, you know, they were, it was important to my boys. So I said, okay. I'm in, I'm going to try and do it. And it obviously destroyed me in the games and they love that, but it was cool for me to see how they operated, what was in, interesting to them and show them that I respected it. And guess what happens when you do that? You get a tiny bit more respect back. You get a tiny bit more of understanding like, Hey, you know what? He tried, he tried to be part of what I'm doing and interested in. I'm going to be a little bit more interested in what he does. And this is a great place for you to build that base to continue the path of respect and and uh, 
multi-directional conversation and dialogue rather than one dimensional one way telling them what to do to be a dictator to be a to to be telling them exactly how it needs to be done and opening up that world of let's do it together so when that difficult conversation comes around we can build on those things because that i remember all these things that you have put in and really shown me that you respect me and in the process me as a dad, I'm kind of breaking down all those burdens that I'm carrying with me from generations before and all the expectations and things that, that are on my shoulders to be a certain way, to be the machismo, to not show them that I that I care too much and, and I care a certain way only. And then have this, have this place where you say, okay, I'm going to start breaking some of these things down, but in a comfortable, approachable, simple way. How about some feedback on number four? Okay, no problem. We will go to number five. And I think um, this is a great way to end the, the uh, Mental Fitness Five for Fathers is, um, gosh, I think just reading that alone, it, 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 it resonates with me so much, is to give yourself and them grace. Uh, we put so much pressure on ourselves to be somebody and be a role and to act a certain way and to be judged and to be, have these expectations on us that we forget, we forget that it's okay. It's okay to, to not figure it out, to, to not know some things, to not understand how things uh, are supposed to be sometimes and to fail, right? Our society is, is, is so harsh on you not doing a certain way all the time when everybody on this call and on this planet fails on a regular basis. And we see that as such a negative. It's like that, you know, we saw the image of the, of the uh, climber is that we see that dips are a very bad thing rather than great opportunities for us to kind of reset, to make sure we go down a path and we, we gain from that to then be able to ascend and do better. And to, to also have that for our kids, right? They're kids first and foremost. So they're really at the most inquisitive creative open time of their lives and for them not to experiment in how they think and how they act and the things that they do uh, you're really um, uh, suppressing who a child should be but to give them that opportunity and where the sphere comes in what we talked about the idea of spheres create an environment that they can roam freely in and if they trip and fall it's okay if we trip and fall it's okay for us to be able to say okay Let's make sure that we focus on what we can gain from this and what we can put towards how we're interacting and what we need between you and me. Because as we said, it's unique. It's unique. That relationship is unique towards where we need to go and what we need to do to grow together. So the, the giving grace, you know, we've all, I think, been there where you walk away from something. You say, gosh, darn it. I, I really messed up and I, I don't like how I was or how I acted and what I said, and to be able to give yourself that grace and the same thing that you do for your kids. So how about number five? Does that resonate with anyone on the, on, in this call? Hey, Bobby, this is Charlie. Um, number four and five did resonate with me just because it reminded me of uh, when I first, uh, when, when I was, I married my wife and I got to interact with some of her uh, nieces and I, I don't think if I didn't get that encouragement and push from her to engage with their nieces and, and even how to do so, because I grew up uh, being the youngest in my family. And so, you know, just to show me like, hey, this is how you play with the kids. This is how you engage with them and how to do so by putting your electronics to the side and just be with them, be present with them. Yep. And, you know, I fumbled and fell and, and I didn't know what I was doing, but I think eventually I stuck with it and I enjoyed it. And it got to show, got to have me see like, this is what it looks like to engage with the kid and what I can look forward to when I become a father. Thank you for sharing that. Absolutely. Anybody else? Well, um, I share something on this one. Give yourself and them grace. We have this tendency. I don't know if you've heard this a lot 
in society about perfection. Nobody's perfect. Everybody's talking about perfection. Sure. Throwing this word around on a regular basis as if you're not allowed to make a mistake. Yeah. And especially we as parents, we try to sometimes put up this facade like I'm the perfect parent. I don't make mistakes and all this other stuff. I can't fail. Right. One of the things that I try to teach and instill in our parents is this. It's okay to make a mistake, but don't look at a mistake as failure. Look at it as a way of saying, this is a result that I was not expecting or looking for. Because life is an experiment. Experiments never fail. They just give you what you're not looking for, but you keep trying until you get the result you're looking for. Great point. And so that's a way of giving yourself and your and other people grace by saying, no, you didn't fail. You just got a result you wasn't looking for. But it's an experiment. Experiment with something else until you get the results you want. And that's how I try to view number five and try to teach that in terms of Number five, which kind of ties into number one, where the good, where you share the good and the bad, mm-hmm. they kind of tie into each other, is how I see it. Because if it's okay to not be okay, that means you're showing them the good and the bad. You're basically saying, I made an experiment that didn't give me the result I was looking for. I need to re experiment with something else. That I do. Thank you for that. Great words. I appreciate you sharing that. Yeah, Mr. Jeff, Mr. Jeff Tunnel also had. Um some feedback well i apologize for stepping on mark uh, i guess <laughs> no. my earbuds have a delay and i didn't even know you were talking brother sorry uh it's kind, of rude, kind of rude of me but thanks for your wisdom i, I was just gonna say bobby and to everybody on the call uh having adult kids and i have 14 grandchildren and man you're gonna make some big mistakes along that route but i'm looking back when my kids and i get together and we talk it's usually the mistakes that are the center of conversations where we learn so much together and uh, we laugh like crazy. And usually the, the laughter is pointed at me and my failure. And, you know, when it's not in the moment, uh, it becomes a great memory. So we, we live by grace. And I, I think that's a great choice of words. You know, if you don't, know, thank you so much for sharing that. I have a question for you, is because you you you've uh, you've had a portion of this journey as a father, sort of be completed, and you're a different portion of it now, and different part of that journey, based on the things that you've seen on on the on the mental fitness side. Which one out of the five most resonates with you? That you say now that I look back, and and now that I see what I have ahead of me, which one of these is? would you say is most pertinent? Let's say for someone who is a, 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 at the beginning stages of this journey. That's a fantastic question, Bobby. Um, I, I think looking backward now, I would really encourage a young guy to focus on taking care of himself, mm-hmm. uh, being really, and the mental aspect, the mental health aspect, when, of course, when I was growing up, that was a long time ago, that was something that was almost taboo to even talk about or yeah. think about. Just wasn't even almost allowed or considered. Just had to buck up and, and uh, you know, no blood, no foul. Just keep moving. So uh, the idea of taking a, having a conversation with a therapist was, man, that wouldn't even happen. So, but now I see it encouraged. So uh, maybe blending two there of your five, but uh, getting that young guy to, to take care of himself and know that he's got to remain strong so he can be the dad he needs to be. Yeah, thank you. I mean, uh, that that uh, what a what a what a wonderful um, point to bring up that that concept of bucking up, you know, putting your head down and getting through it, you know, just just uh, just get over it. Uh, these are the things that I think a lot of guys say to themselves, and they say, I can't. I can't even I can't even uh, entertain the thought of me not being where I need to be, and they put so much pressure on themselves. And and guess where that pressure transfers to? Your kids. It doesn't dissipate. It doesn't go away. You you will give it off. And man, do those little guys know how to pick up on that energy and feel it, and they will absorb it. So so important 
to, if I were to say absolutely your point, uh, it's so important when we when we come in contact with dads to to try and normalize, for lack of a better term, the concept of of mental health and mental fitness. That that it's so important and it's a good thing. That it's not like you're dealing with something, but that it's something that's positive, not only for yourself but for your kids. So I really appreciate you sharing that wonderful thoughts. Um, and with that, it's interesting. You know, we go through this process and these thoughts. And people say, okay, so then what? And, and really, it, 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 what I tell to people is like, you're, you're, you have to consider what you're going through right now as a father is like you're trying to summit, but you're not trying to summit with the idea of this is it. It's really summiting so you can then get a perspective of what else is available and what else is ahead, right? You're never going to summit all of them, but you have to continue the process of understanding and feeling that you're getting to something and, and going in a direction. It's actually not necessarily forward, but it's, it's a matter of you exploring and allowing yourself to go through that, go through the dips and feel and understand. You can then work your way up and then see what's next. What is the next layer that I have to work on? So it's different levels of the same thing. It's, 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 a, it's a competency and it's a comfort and it's, a, it's an opportunity that reveals itself as you are ready to do it. So the work never stops. There's no graduation or certification or a finish line. You know, we have to get rid of those terminologies and really think about, again, the sphere concept, which is create an environment you feel comfortable and roam within it and be within it and then get in and out as you wish and, and, and do it in a way where you can then also incorporate and have your kids be part of that. Um, that is what I have for you uh, as far as this workshop. I'm happy to talk more about the points or um, however you wish to continue. Uh, Juan, you let me know, but I really, really appreciated your feedback and the opportunity to share this with you. Every time I share it with a group, I, I think about more things and I'm, 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 uh, I'm humbled by the work that you do and how it affects and impacts us and how we work with, with dads and communities. So I thank you for that. And I really appreciate um, the opportunity to be with you guys today. No, absolutely. I think, uh, you know, if we were in person, we'd, you'd be getting a standing ovation right now. That's for sure. And we really appreciate all your feedback. Um, before we get to our closing remarks, I do want to thank Bobby uh, for sharing his wisdom and, and um, his experiences. It's really, really uh, mind opening. And it's awesome to hear that, you know, there's there's others in, in agreement with with engaging fathers and the importance of father, um, the father's role and, and, and the father figures. Right. So I thank you, Bobby, for everything. I, truly, honestly, it's, it's been awesome. Um, please, for those of you that are on now. Uh, check us out next week and every other and every Wednesday as well in the month of June as we'll have other speakers coming on um, for our fatherhood summit next week we have Mr. Kenneth Braswell from uh, Fathers Incorporated out of Atlanta who's been doing this work for you know many decades as well he's also the CEO or, or actually the president of um, National Responsible Fatherhood Clearinghouse and so it'd be exciting to have him on board and, and come out and share some of his wisdom as well in regards to father engagement. Um, but I do want to include some, some stuff here. Um, there, there's no, we can't have a fatherhood summit without having dad jokes, right? So I want you to include some dad jokes. And for those of you that already know me, um, you already know that that's, I, I got to have these dad jokes, right? So my apologies for those of you that don't like dad jokes. I heard my kids yesterday talking about mom jokes. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. There's no such thing as mom, the mom jokes. You got it's dad jokes. Mom jokes don't seem to be positive. Like people, you know, roasting their moms. I'm like, you can't do that because once I hear mom jokes, I'm I'm thinking they're gonna start talking about my mama. Don't talk about my mom, <laughs> right? But anyways, anyways, I got a couple good ones here for you. And if you please could share some before we check out, before we get to our closing remarks by Mr. James Moses. But I'm gonna share a couple. Of, um, one of my favorite ones that I just got told by my kids, my kids be throwing these at me all the time. Why do fathers take an extra pair of socks when they go golfing? And if you get this right, you'll get one of these awesome cool rags. It's getting, it's summertime. So I know for those of you that be working out and running, you're going to need these. So make sure that you get your, your cool rags and make sure you put the response in the chat. 
Oh, Why do fathers yeah. take an extra pair of socks when they go golfing? Come on. It's easy. It's easy. Think about golfing. I don't see nothing in the chat. Oh, you guys <laughs> type so slow. In case they get somebody Googled it. Jeff, you Googled it, you cheated. But you're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna, you're gonna get it anyways. You, you, that was right. In case they get a hole in one. I love it. I love it. All right. That was good. That was good, Jeff. You're probably a golfer, so I'm not going to take it away from you. What do you call a fish wearing a bow tie? Anybody? This one's kind of hard. Kind of threw me off. All right. It's sophisticated. Sophisticated. Yeah, that, that one was pretty bad, but I, I still like it, though. I still like it. Okay, here we go. How do you follow Will Smith in the snow? This is a good one. I love this one. How do you follow Will Smith? Don't go typing it up, Bobby. I see you typing right now. <laughs> oh, Jason McDonald got it. Ah, man, his fresh prince. Yup, 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 yup. Oh, man. All right. Here goes one more. So, uh, Jason McDonald, we're, I'm going to make sure I save this chat. I'm going to send you your gift as well. All right. I already said that cut, one before, so you guys will get this one. How do you cut the ocean in half? There we go. I don't know. How? How? With a seesaw. With a seesaw. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> All right, here we go. Where do fruits go on vacation? Where do fruits go on vacation? Paris. Come on now. That was a good one, guys. I did Paris. <laughs> Come on. All right. Whoever gets this one gets an Amazon card. Here we go. Who wants a $25 Amazon card? Okay. Everybody wants a. All right. Here we go. Where do you learn to make a banana split? If you get the, you got, you got 20 seconds, 19, 18, 17, 16, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10. Come on. Where do you learn how to make a banana split? Four, three. Yeah, Alondra. Miss Alondra got it from preschool services. One of my favorite folks. You got it. Sunday school. That was quick typing on Google. She, she got on there real <laughs> quick. I know that. I know. There's no way of getting that one. All right. So, Miss Alondra, go ahead and send me uh, your um, address so I can send you wherever you want me to send the uh Amazon $25 gift card. But yeah, everybody else got one of these awesome cool rags. I want to see you guys sporting them out in the community, right? If you safely take a picture of one of our ads out in the community, I'll probably even um, hook you up with another gift um, later on down the line. All right. So thank you everybody for being here. Truly appreciate it. Uh, we'll have some more fun next week and, and the rest of the Wednesdays. Please follow us on Facebook. I'm going to share really quick what we got going on on our Facebook page. Um, for those of you that are really interested in, in connecting our dads to some of our tips, uh, you can go on our Facebook page at IE Fathers, and we'll, we'll, we have a lot of these great videos where we share um, tips for dads to engage with their kids, maybe activities that they can do with their kids, um, and check this one out. Hi, Juan Solis here, Father Engagement Coordinator with Children's Network. And today on Father's Toolbox, we want to share some tips for dads and behaviors that you can model okay. every day, not just on Mother's Day. Modeling positive communication with your child's mom is really key for them to see. Modeling respect for your child's mother is also important for them to see. Providing support for mom by helping her around the house on a daily basis is always important as well. It's important that the children see you modeling these things around the house. Bringing honor to mom is always key. Juan Solis here on Father's Toolbox, and I hope to catch you next time. And remember, learn to be content, but don't stay content.
I don't know why I picked that one, man. I got I got scared. I thought it was the same shirt I was wearing today. I was like, man, it looks like I just did that one, but it's not. It's completely. <laughs> it's a completely different print. <clears throat> um, but thank you again. Thank you. Uh, you again. Follow us on Facebook. I'll even um, I'll share the link here, and I'm gonna stop talking in a minute. But I will share the link on our on uh, um, the chat. You guys can check it out on your spare time. And then I'll also, right after Mr. James is uh, closes us out, I will be sharing uh, our survey link as well. So that way you guys can um, complete our survey in regards to today's um, workshop and keynote speaker. And again, Mr. Bobby, thank you so much. And without any further ado, Mr. James, go ahead. Thanks, Juan. Appreciate it. Um, well, first, I just want to say thank you to you, Juan. I really appreciate all the work you've done as our father engagement coordinator. You've done a tr tremendous job, and uh, the workshops here have been great. I want to reiterate the appreciation to Bobby. This is a fantastic presentation today. I didn't weigh in as you were sharing the, the five uh, you know, fitness factors um, because I knew that I was going to have an opportunity to share at the end. Many of those things, if not all of them, resonated with me in a lot of ways. You know, you talked about how um, we need to talk with our kids. And for me, I was blessed to, you know, I've been in my kids' life since they were born. And so when you start that relationship and develop that, that communication channel at an early age, it does carry through. And so we saw folks in the chat room putting in information. And, and uh, Bobby talked about the, the person who, uh, chatted about the dinner table. Well, my dinner table was similar to that, but it started long before the kids were old enough to really communicate at the, at the dinner table. It started with that communication in the beginning. And another thing I thought about around talking to our kids, uh, Bobby, you said, if we don't talk to our kids, someone else will. And one of the things I would encourage fathers and really all of us to do is one of the things I did was make sure that I was engaged with other men that were all better than me, men that were going to be a positive influence in my children's lives, men that if my kids weren't hearing, you know, not that they weren't hearing from me, but sometimes kids don't hear the message from their own father the way they might hear it from someone else. But if you surround yourself with incredible people, then the information that's passed down to your children, you, you know that's going to be wonderful information. And so Christ and, and God bless me with this incredible support of, of men that my children were always, I have two boys and they're grown men now, but they always had this great group of mentors in men that I always knew were going to guide them in the right direction. And the other benefit of having this group of men was we talking a lot about mental health. Um, we all experience mental health issues, and, and I certainly had my share um, in, my, in my lifetime. But those other men that were in my group helped alleviate many of my mental health concerns because they were there talking with me, doing the things that are on this list. They were talking with me. They were sharing with me. They were providing me grace. They were helping me be resilient. You know, you think about the Strengthening Families Foundation and, and what we need. Well, having that group of support goes a long way. It not only benefited my kids, it benefited me. It better educated me and it provided me with, um, with uh, this, you know, group of people that were there for me that helped me through the most challenging times in my life. Um, and I was, another thing that resonated, um, <coughs> Bobby, you talked about um, be part of your kid's world. And I think as fathers, we often have an idea, especially fathers of boys, what we want them to do, what we're going to teach them, how we're going to guide them. Well, I was a baseball player. Um, you know, my whole life into young adulthood before I finally realized I wasn't good enough. And, and I thought my boys were going to be baseball players. There was just no doubt in my mind, my boys were going to be baseball players. And when they were young, they were baseball players and they were pretty good at it. 
but they never loved it the way that I loved it. And so it, it unfortunately, it took them a year or two longer to give up a sport they didn't love because they, they were struggling to understand that dad would accept them giving that sport up and chasing their passions. But what's happened, <clears throat> they gave that sport up, but now we play softball together. Uh, and we've been doing that for about eight or 10 years. It's a wonderful, <coughs> excuse me, I'm battling a little bit of a cold. It's been a wonderful time together. But by encouraging them to give up what they didn't love and be involved in what they do love, and then me being a part of that, it, it opened up so many other things for us. You know, I became a snowboarder. I started riding mountain bikes down, uh, you know, Mammoth Mountain and Bear Mountain. Um, I, I, and when I was a kid, skateboarding wasn't cool. You weren't cool if you rode a skateboard. Now, you know, I can go down to the skate park and, and I can do a few tricks, you know, I might fall, but I can do a few of those tricks because I spent a lot of time on skateboards because that's what my boys love. So I think that was great advice, uh, Bobby, that you gave us. And, and um, I really, you know, I also want to say thank you to all of you that are in attendance. It was so incredible to see how many folks shared um, pieces of their life and their story verbally um, but also in the chat room, the chat room just never stopped with people um, <coughs> commenting or giving feedback and, uh, and sharing what their experiences were and offering insight that might help someone else uh, be a better person. And, you know, I think that's our focus is, is that, you know, every day I wake up and for me, I'm a faith based person. So I wake up and I pray and I say, Lord, help me be a better man today than I was yesterday. That is always part of my prayers. And that encompasses all parts of my life. I want to be a better employee, a better friend, a, a, a better um, husband and a better fa father. And most importantly, for me, a better servant uh, you know, of Christ. But we, we can't really look back on where we were. And I think a lot of what Bobby talked about has, has um, when we think about grace, that connects that, that we are where we are today, and we have opportunity to move from where we are today to a better place in all our relationships, and that includes our relationships with, with our children. And so I'm really excited to hear about a lot of the work you, you all are doing in our community to engage fathers. You know, Juan said it's not the end-all, be-all. We're not think, saying that fathers, um, you know, are the solution to everything, but we do know that engaged fathers create better families, better communities, and that, that's critical. So I just want to say thank you to all of you for what you do. We appreciate your involvement with IEF. Uh, I see Child Care Resource Center is where I work. Uh, my, I, I think I said my name is James Moses, but if I didn't, I'm the Regional Director for Child Care Resource Center. We are thrilled to be a part of the work we're doing around father engagement. And again, I thank all of you for the work you do. And I hope you have a great week and I look forward to seeing some of you uh, the rest of the month as we continue to learn more about how we engage fathers and how we support and benefit them. So thank you all. Thank you, James. Thank you, James. Uh, James Moses, for those of you that don't know, is one of our founding members and board uh, advisory board of the Ellen Empire Father Involvement Coalition. And I really hope we didn't shave because of your speaking engagement today, Mr. James, because I enjoyed your beard when I saw you a few, a few weeks ago. <laughs> but on that note, I do want to, uh, again, give a, a proper, uh, a proper um, recognition to our speaker and everybody else here today. So this is for you guys. Appreciate you all. Have a good one. Thank you. Bye.
Is that it, sir? Are we done for the day? No, we sure are. Okay. Well, then I'm gonna I'm gonna 